everyone. It's Angie Click from She Tries, and my hat is a little crooked. Um, it's so good to see everybody today, and we are just gearing up for She Tries at Ion Club, which is this Saturday. So this is the Cruise Subaru She Tries Ion Club pre-event meeting. So thank you for joining. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the window, and we will get to them uh, during this live meeting or afterwards we'll answer them in the comment section. So just want to go over a few uh, logistics for the event which will make you um, have a more smooth event day because we all know everyone's excited, everyone maybe is a little nervous and we just want to get rid of all of that just so you can really enjoy your event day and have a smooth, smooth she tries and really just enjoy the day. So for this event there is a virtual triathlon um, and if you are virtual participants, your swag bags will be mailed later today and you should receive them soon. And we also have in-person triathlon and triathlon relay option for individual and relays. So we were able to bring relays back this year. So we're super excited and we have a bunch of teams. Um, so we're, we're really excited about that. The tomorrow, uh, no, I'm sorry, Friday is the uh, packet pickup, first day of packet pickup. So it is from 3 to 6 p.m. at the Ion Club. It will take place in the front lawn. In years past, it was in the clubhouse, but they're under a little bit of construction. So it's going to be in the front lawn of the Ion Club. You will see us under the She Tries tent. Um, and there will be, you will also need to bring your ID. That is very important. When you come to pack a pickup, bring your ID. Don't leave it in your car. Don't leave it at home or we will have to have you go home and get it. Even if we know you and have known you for 25 years, it's a, it's a requirement. It's a USAT requirement. And also if you can pick up a minor's packet, if you are the parent, but we will need to see your ID. There will be a pre-event meeting at 5.45 at the ION Club. So if you uh, didn't get a chance to watch this or just have some extra questions or just really wanna hear things again, please uh, come and join us at 5.45 on the front lawn of the ION Club. Uh, Trek Bicycle Store of Charleston will be in attendance at the Packet pickup, so if you have any bike questions or want them to look at something um, simple, simple repairs, um, they can answer your questions. They will be on site. And we will also have our She Tries merchandise. So you can get all the good swag. You can get your last minute items like race belts, uh, tank tops, tri suits, uh, all kinds of goodies. Um, and that is pretty much gonna take care of Friday. Uh, it's always an exciting day when we start to set up at the ION Club and it really starts to look like an event. Um, so Saturday, um, you all should have received a email today that has the timeline. I'm just gonna go through it one more time um, just so everybody gets the same information a couple times. It's always good to hear it multiple times. Um, transition is going to open at 5.30 a.m. Um, no need to get here any time before that, we won't be ready for you. So 5 a.m. transition opens, participants may arrive um, then. All the parking is at the Oak Quinn School, which is located at 761 South Shellmore Boulevard. There will be volunteers helping park your cars and um, uh, it should be self-explanatory. It's a very short walk uh, from Oak Quinn School to the ION Club. So there is no parking at ION anywhere. Uh, 545, body marking and chip pickup uh, starts. So even if you got your packet on Friday, you will still need to go get body marked. So we put your event number on your arm and we put your age on your calf. And you will also need to pick up your timing chip. That's how we will know what, uh, what time you have for the event. Um, so you will need to pick up those two things irregardless if you picked up your packet on Friday. Um, I will just want to quickly make mention that before you get body marked, it's a good idea to wait to put your sunscreen on until after because it really is difficult to write um, the numbers on you um, with sunscreen and it wears out our markers really quickly. So please wait to put sunscreen on until after you get body marked. 7 a.m. the, oh, 7 o'clock. Uh, 
I don't know, did I say we'll have a packet pickup um, that morning, 5.45 to 7 a.m. We also have packet pickup Saturday morning if you can't get there Friday. Uh, 7 a.m. body marking, chip pickup, and packet pickup area closes. Um, we will uh, close that area down because we need to have our volunteers shift to some of their other positions. And then at 7 a.m., if you would like to uh, warm up for the swim, you can warm up in the adult pool area. We have to wait till our lifeguard gets there, so we can't do it before 7. 7.05, transition area closes, so the transition captain and the transition volunteers will um, tell you very nicely and sweetly to get out, <laughs> grab your goggles, your swim cap, and head down to the swim. You can start lining up at 7.05, 7.20, we're going to do the welcome national anthem and some opening remarks, talk about our awesome sponsors, thank our volunteers, and get everybody excited about the day. The triathlon will start at 7.30, it will be prompt, and we estimate about 9.35, the last cyclist will be off the course and on the run. And at that time, once the last cyclist is off the course, you can then go back into transition and start to get some of your stuff out. Um, 10 o'clock or once the final finisher uh, has crossed the finish line, we will start awards. So stick around because you might be surprised um, and you want to cheer on your friends who, who did win awards. Uh, just a couple notes about relays because we do have a few relay teams. Um, the relay works very similar to our regular uh, triathlon, but it does have a few differences. Um, during uh, the portion of the leg of your race, the relay participant must wear the chip on their leg. We recommend the left leg. Uh, we don't want to put it on the right because it can get stuck in your, in your bike chain. Um, the chip is exchanged with the next partner who then puts it on their leg. So every time the swimmer to the biker to the biker to the runner, every time you switch the chip, that's how we get your time. Um, only the participant uh, of those around you. So transition, um, when you get to the event on Saturday morning, uh, the racks will be numbered and you will set up your gear according to your event number. So if you are number one, you line up at rack number one. Um, and it, there will be plenty of volunteers in transition to help you line up, but typically you'll, you'll find your place on your rack. Um, if you're one through five, you go to the rack number one through five and you put your bike on anywhere on the rack and then you um, put your stuff down right next to your bike. And you can, the best way to put your bike on the transition rack is by the nose of your bike seat. And if you have any questions, like I said, we have the most wonderful volunteers that will direct you in transition. The swim. The swim can always be um, kind of a, a nervous spot for people um, and you know sometimes there's a lot of questions around how the swim works. So the way the swim works is we actually have a time trial uh, swim start. You will seed yourself at the swim according to your finish time. So we will have signs um, all around the pool that will be uh, you know lined up one through ten. Um, that will have estimated finish time. So if you know it's going to take you three minutes and 30 seconds to do the 200 uh, yards, then you are going to want to line up at number one at the fastest swimmer section. Um, if you know it's going to take you 20 minutes, you're going to want to line up in the 20 minute section. And if you don't know your pace and you just want to take your time and you um, want to line up at the end, that is totally fine too. You line up where you are most comfortable. Um, there will be volunteers in the pink shirts all around the pool that will help you uh, get yourself situated and line up according to the time that will work for you. If um, you do seed yourself wrong or someone else sees themselves wrong, which does happen, try to have the most patience as possible. And um, there is a polite way to pass people in the pool. So the way to do it in a triathlon is if you come up um, swimming on somebody, you're gonna tap their foot and once they get to the end of the lane, they're gonna pause, they're gonna wait for you to pass and you're gonna go on uh, swimming. Um, just to note that all of the swimming is one directional in the lane, so that really helps create a nice wide lane so you could pass um, in the lane if you wanted to as well. Um, you can uh, stop at any point during the swim section. You can put your feet down. Most of you will be able to stand in the pool unless you're short like me. Um, you can hold on to the lane line and you can hold on to the wall. Um, we just wanna get you through this swim. So 
However you need to get through it, um, you can use any stroke you want. We just want you to have success. Uh, at the end of the pool, when you're done swimming, there are steps. You do not need to go all the way down to the end of the wall and touch the wall before you get out on the steps. Once you see those steps, you can just get right out um, and exit the pool. There will be a volunteer that will tell you which direction to go. And if you wear um, any type of glasses or anything that you need, you can hand those to the exit volunteer and she will hold on to those for you uh, before you get in the pool and have them for you once you leave. We do provide a swim cap um, and it is up to you if you want to wear it. I highly recommend wearing the swim cap that we provide. Um, they're pretty, they make nice pictures and they keep your hair out of your face. So, um, but if you are not comfortable wearing a swim cap, uh, if you didn't train with wearing a swim cap, you do not have to wear it. Um, once the, your swim is over, you're going to follow the path out of the pool area and you're going to go into transition. Originally, we mentioned that maybe it might be best to wear some sort of foot covering, um, but right now we um, have carpet. We had carpet baggers donate some carpet and the whole line into transition is carpeted. So, um, so thank you carpet baggers for protecting our feet. Um, the area where transition is, is a slight bit gravelly. Um, so thank you to the Press and More group. They are giving you little towels. You can wipe off your feet and go on with your day. Um, but I would highly suggest taking that towel um, that will be in your swag bag and putting it in your transition so that you can wipe the gravel off your feet. Okay, so after you swim, the next thing you're going to do is bike. So when you check in um, for the bike, you will, um, or when you check in at Packet Pickup, you're gonna, get two, you're gonna get two numbers. You're going to get a number for, to wear on the run, and you're going to get a number on, to put on your bike. Uh, when you, so you get that bike sticker, you're going to put that on the frame of your bike, um, and you're gonna do that uh, ahead of, ahead of um, coming to the event. So do that at home. Um, once you get on the bike, uh, once you get to your bike rack, you must put on your helmet and you must latch your helmet. That is a USAT rule. That is a very important rule. It's safety. Um, so once you la put on your helmet, that should be the first thing you do before you get on, um, before, once you get to the bike rack. Um, so put on your helmet, latch it, and then um, you're going to uh, walk or jog your bike out of transition and you are going to take that all the way across the Ion Club parking lot to the mount line. The mount line and the dismount line for the bike is uh, in the same location. So the volunteers will tell you which side to be on for the mount line and which side to be on the dismount line. It is a little bit of a walk or jog with your bike out of transition. And that is primarily for safety because we have the finish line festival in the front lawn. Um, we just want to make sure, um, in case anybody happens to walk in your way, it's much easier to stop while you're pushing your bike rather than riding it. So we're just trying to keep everybody safe. So it is a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a walk to get to where you mount your bike. So on the bike course, we have police and we have amazing volunteers. So um, once you're uh, on the bike course, you will notice that there um, is pretty much a police and a volunteer at all the intersections. So the police are there to direct traffic and the volunteers are there to direct participants. And um, you know, it's still important for you to glance around that uh, intersection. You do not have to stop. Um, you can keep going, but I would make sure just for your own safety that you give it a, a look and just make sure there's no cars coming. Um, when you are on the bike, there is no drafting. Um, drafting is not legal in this type of triathlon. Um, you probably wouldn't do it on purpose. <laughs> um, and you probably, if you did it, would do it by accident. But um, what it means to draft is that um, you're very close to the bike in front of you and you actually get assistance from riding behind somebody very closely. So we ask you to stay three bike lengths away from the person in front of you. If you need to pass, um, you can pass the person. Just go ahead and go up on them, pass them on the left. Just like if you were a car, you can say on your left, you can say I'm passing, you can say good morning, um, and then go ahead and pass them and then keep going. There are two loops on the bike. This is a pretty important part of the course. Um, there are two loops, not one, two. 
and there will be volunteers. After you finish your first loop, they're gonna direct you around the loop onto your second loop, and then um, once you come back in, you should know if you're on loop two or if you're finishing, and there will be volunteers to direct you where to go. Um, but if you only do one loop, you will get disqualified and you will be sad, so please do, please do two loops. So you come in off the bike, and the next leg is the run. Um, once you go on the run, you're going to have your number. It's either going to be pinned to your shirt or you're going to put it on a race belt, which is just an elastic belt that you can clip around your waist when you go out to run out for the race. Um, there, we do sell them. So if you need a race belt, um, you can pick one up from us uh, at Packet Pickup on Friday. Um, so on the run course, it is not close to traffic. Um, likewise, on the bike course, it is not close to traffic. Uh, you should be able to stay on sidewalks um, most everywhere on or a path everywhere in Ion Club, but just know that it is not closed to vehicles. So if you see a car, you might want to get out of their way. Um, run number needs to be facing forward. Um, and another important note, I apologize, but there are no headphones allowed on the course. That is a very strict USAT rule for safety. So there are no headphones. If we do see you with headphones, you will be disqualified. Um, but it's, it's a really big safety concern. So please no headphones. Um, spectator viewing, uh, spectators are welcome. We love your family and friends. Um, we want them to celebrate with you. Um, the only places they cannot go is, uh, they cannot go into transition with you and they cannot go on the pool deck with you. So there will be plenty of spots for them to watch the swim from outside of the fence. Uh, they will be able to get they can go anywhere on the bike course, anywhere on the run course, um, but they cannot be in transition and they cannot be on the pool deck. So there are plenty of spots to watch. Um, we will have, as far as bathrooms, there will be some by the pool um, when you start in the morning and there'll also be some portalettes near transition. So feel free to use both. Um, and lastly, uh, on Friday and Saturday, we have a when you check in and get your packet, you will also get a passport. And this passport will have all of the sponsors that are going to be at the event. And what you will do is you will go um, around to all the sponsors, you'll get them to initial next to their logo, and then we will put all this, the passports in a drawing. So um, we have some really great prizes from a bunch of our sponsors. Um, so you will definitely wanna go ahead and, and get that sponsor zone passport uh, filled out. Um, so that concludes our um, pre-event meeting unless there's any questions. Um, don't hesitate to reach out to us, ask, um, you know, feel free to ask us any questions. I will be on site on Friday um, along with um, all of our volunteers and I just want to give a big, big shout out to our volunteers. I probably said the word volunteer 700 times already on this um, this meeting, but we could not do our event without our volunteers. They are the ones out there cheering for you. They are keeping you safe and they want to be here for you. We have volunteers that sign up every year in advance and we have a lot of repeat volunteers because they love cheering you on. They love seeing the things, the amazing things that you're about to do. Um, and also can't, uh, can't do an event without sponsors. So, um, you know, we really want to thank Cruise Subaru for setting up, stepping up as our title sponsor and the Preston Moore Group for being our presenting sponsor. And um, some of our sponsors that will be on site um, will be doing some pretty cool things. So we have Blue Sky uh, doing hair braiding uh, Saturday morning. So if you, it's a really great way to have some uh, race hair. Uh, braids are really convenient. They fit under your swim cap. They fit under your bike helmet. It's really easy um, and we have a bunch of other sponsors that are gonna be on site, um, but if it's you know, gonna be a warm day, which I think it is, um, stay hydrated and select physical therapy. We'll have icy towels for you at the finish line. Those always are just such a nice treat to cool you off. And of course we will have our celebratory mimosas from Savvy Cucina and we also have Island beer this year. So that's new. Um, and we have some Charleston bagel company bagels and some other treats. So we look forward to Saturday and I can't wait to see everybody. Please come introduce yourself to me, say hey, and I can't wait to see you all in person on Saturday. 
Uh, have a great rest of the day. See you Friday. See you Saturday. Bye-bye.